Masada VC Nice, Yoso's operation coordinator, and today I'm going to introduce you to the Baroque Oboe. Alongside my career in arts administration, I have a background in oboe performance and music history. I was first introduced to this instrument during my undergraduate degree, and it is now my main instrument. I currently perform on the Baroque Oboe with Sunita Baroco San Antonio, a local chamber music group that was co-founded by Yoso Flute Choir conductor, Dr. Kristen Hayes. So this is my Baroque Oboe. Instruments such as these are called period instruments. This type of oboe was performed mainly from the late 17th century to the mid 18th century. It was a relatively small period, but there was a wealth of composition. This particular oboe is a reconstruction based on J.H. Eichentoff's oboes. He was a German instrument maker in Leipzig during the 18th century. As you can see, there are a lot of characteristic differences from the modern oboe to the Baroque oboe. There are no keys on these six main holes, and these are called half holes. They're used to play notes such as A flat or F sharp. There are two keys at the bottom, C key and E flat key. There's actually usually an E flat key on the other side, and that is to facilitate switching your hands. But nowadays, no one usually switches their hands. They just play it normally. Um, lastly, there's no octave key. You can see the wearing down where my thumb would normally be where an octave key is. Um, now let's take a look at the reeds. I took out a modern oboe reed so you can see some of the physical differences. You can't see fine differences, but you can um, gauge the shape of it and things like that. Um, kind of similar to the English horn reed. Um, the construction of the Baroque reed is also based on historical documents similar to the reconstruction of the oboe, but there are very little examples of it. And so reed making is very much informed by modern oboe reed making. Um, for those double reed nerds out there, Baroque oboists shape their own cane, unlike modern oboists. Now that we've looked at the reeds and the oboe, let's play a snippet here. I'm sure you heard, I did start the trill on the upper note, but that's a whole nother video discussion. Um, so the sound is similar to the modern oboe. It's a little bit more open and natural. There are no keys to dampen the sound. It's um, a very direct sound. Um, you know, when I play this oboe on a Bach piece or a Handel piece, Sometimes the scales and the phrases and structure feel really natural on this instrument. It's almost as if it was made for that instrument. <laughs> um, and so the technological advances, such as the addition of the keys to dampen the sound and the varied styles of music composition happening in the late 18th century really went hand in hand. You know, one didn't necessarily precede the other. Eventually, the Baroque oboe morphed into what we know as the modern orchestral oboe today. Um, so to conclude, I want to answer a question. Why play a period instrument? There are varied answers to this. In my opinion, playing a period instrument can bring us closer to a realization of the composer's intention. That is why the practice of playing a period instrument is called historically informed performance. Period instruments can give us a chance to hear what the composers would theoretically hear in their contemporary time period that we will tr never truly know due to the obvious lack of recordings. Um, personally, I feel a sort of kinship with the musicians of the past when I play my Baroque oboe. It gives me a sense of shared humanity. Um, I think that is one amazing aspect of music, that connection. Um, I'm performing the same music they did with reconstructions of the instruments that they use. Specifically for the Baroque oboe, I can't help but think of those orphaned young girls in 18th century Venice, Italy that would perform Antonio Vivaldi's music. And here I am, a Latinx in 21st century South Texas, and I'm able to bridge that gap and share in that human experience. So as a classical musician, if you feel curious about the origins or previous iterations of your instrument, please do some Googling and research. Violinists, take a look at how they held their instrument and bow in the Baroque era. How does that inform your playing in a solo Bach piece? 
Trumpet players, how does having no valves in the Baroque trumpet inform your concept of the harmonic series or playing partials? You know, there are a lot of interesting aspects to many different period instruments. And I think it is worth thinking about these ideas when approaching a piece that was composed for an instrument constructed earlier than your modern instrument. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you guys soon.